Hello, today we're going to be chatting about some relationship myths. I am going to cover three or four of them, I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see if anything actually else comes up as I talk, as I chat with you. But today is going to be an episode where you might experience what I would call tough love. Um, maybe I will shake up some feelings inside of you. But you know what? Hey, as a coach, I actually need to do that once in a while so that you don't get stuck in that place of not knowing what to do or that place of um, place of not having clarity around what's going on. So I am going to be very straightforward today in this episode. So buckle your seatbelt and let's go. So the first myth that I wanted to chat about is that you complete me myth, okay? And if you guys have watched Jerry Maguire, probably most of you have, and you remember that elevator scene when that couple, or I'm not sure if that was the woman or the man saying that you complete me and drawing that kind of heart. And a lot of women who are, especially women who are watching this movie, they were like, oh, I wish I had a relationship like that where the other person could just completely because I feel so unfulfilled in my relationship. Guess what? The other person, your partner, your spouse is not in your relationship to complete you or to fulfill your life. And why is that so? Because first of all, if you feel not complete to begin with, that means that there is some energetic gaps in you, some unfulfilled needs that you have that nobody else can fulfill for you. And granted, yes, you might have a partner who you will feel like who completes you and who fulfills that gap. And when you're with them, you feel like um, you you feel complete. You feel like your life makes sense. And the minute he is gone or away, maybe on a on a trip or a business trip, right? You feel like something's missing. That is a huge red flag right there. So let me just tell you that if you are looking for that other partner, sometimes we say, oh, he's my other half, right? Well, no, <laughs> you need to be whole on its own to have a relationship that is truly fulfilling. If you're not fulfilled on your own, then there is nobody who's going to do it for you in a sustainable way, right? Because I started talking about that relationship where Yes, your partner, you feel like he completes you, like your life is whole and makes sense when you're around him. And when he's not, something's missing. Well, so like I said, this is that red flag that will tell you, okay, something's missing energetically on the inside of me. I mentioned also the word sustainable. Sustainable is the way that lasts and that is something that is kind of fixed and healed for good. And the only way that you can really do that healing and that feeling that you're complete is really by completing yourself, by working on yourself, with yourself, and recognizing what, what lacks in your energetic field. Is it the, the piece of acceptance? Is it the piece of appreciation maybe of your own self? Maybe there's that piece of respect that's missing. There is a lot that can be going on there. But yes, to summarize, nobody's coming to save you. Like if you're looking for a relationship, maybe you're single right now, right? And you're looking for a relationship to feel like your life makes sense, like you whole, then again, another red flag because you might find a partner that will do it for a while, but he's also going to get tired of fulfilling your needs. And chances are that you're going to be perceived by him as just needy, right? And at some point he'll be like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. And that's why when I call when I talk about a relationship or any kind of healing being sustainable, it's the kind of healing that will always stay with you regardless of the circumstances. So whether your partner decides to stay or to go, it doesn't really affect you too much because you have healed on your own and you feel complete and whole already. And you're going to attract a partner who is the same, right? Who also feels complete. 
and then your relationship instead of being that kind of needy relationship where you need something from your partner and your partner needs something from you then you kind of enhance each other's life i always talk about the relationships as um so here's another myth okay let me maybe rephrase that here's another myth that i would like to bust that when we come to a relationship suddenly that person needs to be there always for you and fulfilling your needs and knowing what your wants are what your um, needs are and kind of cater to everything that you desire that you lack right so a lot of times we come to a relationship with that whole list of expectations they a lot of them are subconscious we don't know that we have them until the partner doesn't meet them and it's like oh he's not giving this to me what's going on here and we look at our partner as the guilty party right as the one okay there must be something wrong with my partner because i need a b and c and d and he's not giving it to me so again a relationship is not is to enhance your life a relationship is still a place for freedom a relationship should not be a prison when you imprison the other person with the list of expectations that you have and you constantly pull energy out of that person with the demands that you have right and i guess i know it might be very tough love because you might have you might be in a relationship where you're constantly looking at your partner and you're like okay he needs to fix this he's not giving this to me maybe we should split maybe we should separate because he's just not the person for me and yes sometimes it might be the case but let's dig in and see if you're asking him or demanding subconsciously to fulfill your needs and that would be if you don't feel appreciated if you don't feel loved by him if he doesn't give you enough attention or so you think that is all those are all indicators that there is something missing on the inside of you and needs healing needs filling in those gaps yeah, so next time you watch the Jerry Maguire scene in the elevator, you can say, well, now I know that that's a whole lot of baloney because it does not work like that. Um, and I'll also tell you that if you already have stepped in on that path of self-discovery and you kind of get the inclination that, okay, maybe I need to make some shifts in myself. Maybe my partner is not entirely guilty of that whole situation that we're in, of the conflict that we're in the relationship. And you probably are looking and being, yeah, I have to, there is something inside of me, but you, you, you kind of quite don't know where to go with it. I will tell you something that is actually pretty embarrassing as, as I look at, as I look back at it. When I stepped into, onto that journey of spiritual awakening and self-discovery, I remember reading this book by David Hawkins. It was, I think the name of the book was Letting Go. I think that's what it was. Gosh, I wish I had that with me. Um, but in that book, and I think in all of his books, actually, he has this chart with all the emotions and the emotional scale and see where your consciousness is on what scale, right? And I'm looking at this and I'm like, and I'm, I see myself very much on the bottom or close to the bottom, which is like hopelessness and um, and depression and, and, and all those neg negative as we perceive them feelings, right? But I also look at the scale and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'll be climbing up that scale. Like, I'm going. I understand what's going on now. And we were in a hotel room in New York City. I'm not sure what we were doing in New York City. I, I used to own a clothing business. So it's, there's a possibility I went, went to like a trade show in New York City. Anyhow, I digress. Uh, <laughs> and I remember talking to my husband and telling him i'm like listen i'm climbing up that scale like look at this this is not where i want to go i really need to raise my consciousness so i can climb up that scale and be uh, on the on the positive side and i told them 
I said, if you're not going with me, then I'm sorry, but I'm just like, I'm leaving you. Like, this is not going to work. Like, you need to climb with me. You need to be responsible for your own stuff. And now I know why is it so embarrassing? Because I know that it does not work that way. The way it works, which is a beautiful thing, and it kind of ties into another myth that I'm going to be busting today, is that when you raise your consciousness and when you start healing, your partner will follow. They will follow because they will be coagulating with your energy. So if your energy and vibrational scale goes up, right, then they, they, they will follow that because they will energetically receive the message, the keys, and will be like, oh, okay. And they might not consciously know what's going on and it doesn't matter, but they will follow. Not only that, we have to remember that your partner is every other single person on this earth is your mirror. So if you heal and if you make mind shifts and if you raise your consciousness and if you change your entire attitude toward what you're seeing, right? How you even the patterns of your behavior, your partner will reflect that. So it's not that we're leaving them behind when we grow. No, we're taking them with us whether we want it or not. Well, we usually want, right? <laughs> we usually want that because we want to be um, kind of in sync with the other person. And this is, this is the beauty of it. So the other myth that, again, is probably the biggest myths that there is around relationship is that we need participation of both partners to actually fit, um, to heal or to fix a relationship. And a lot of times... I'll tell you that um, that we're like, well, I would like to fix my relationship, but my partner doesn't even see that there is a problem. He says, well, whatever, right? He doesn't want to participate. Maybe you even were trying to schedule a counseling, a couple or marriage counseling for you, and, and your partner was like, well, I don't think we need it, or he'll come with you just to make you happy, but he's not really opening himself up to a conversation. He's not really exploring his inner world. He doesn't want to talk about his feelings, right? And a lot of times it even causes more agitation um, in the relationship than before. Uh, so what I'm telling you is that you do not need to wait for your partner to start chipping in and to start participating in that whole process of rebuilding your relationship. You don't have to because it's enough when one person raises up and levels up their consciousness, the other person will follow. And a lot of times we get stuck in that place, like I was saying, right? That, yes, I want to do it so much, like I'm making so much effort, but it takes two, right? Like it takes the commitment of both people to actually have a relationship. And so, yes, I agree on that point that if you're, if you're at the place in your relationship when you actually don't care about your partner and you don't love him and he maybe is one foot out the door because he doesn't love you anymore... Well, yes, then that's probably a good indicator that you need to split, right? But if you if you feel that there is something holding you together and you have no idea what it is, but you really you just you just know on the inside that you can do something to heal that relationship, to improve it, to fix it, to get back to that place when you maybe were at the very beginning, like very close and just chatting and talking openly and suddenly it all went downhill right? So when you, on the inside, subconsciously, when you feel, no, I can still, I feel like there is something I can do, then yes, you can, and you don't have to wait for the other person. Listen, this is something that I went through myself, and I discovered that by accident. When I stepped on the journey of self, stepped in on the journey of self-discovery and spiritual growth, like I told you about that embarrassing situation, I was like, well, I was just, my goal was to work on myself because I knew where I was and I knew where I wanted to be. 
I read all the books, right, about the law of attraction and, and the makeup of the universe and how we come here and we have all those contracts. We'll be chatting about that uh, some other time. Absolutely, right? But that opened up my eyes and I was like, okay, so I will be just working on myself and if my husband doesn't follow, then well, he can just stay behind because I'll be up there and he'll be down there, right? <laughs> and And like I told you, it doesn't work that way. So you do not have to wait for your partner to step in. As a matter of fact, I work with women, mostly with women, and then come they come in into my programs and into my coaching on their own. And in a very, very short time, I mean a few weeks, a month, maybe sometimes two months, it really depends, right? How deep those those issues are in your relationship. But they're telling me, like, oh my God, I got, I don't know what's going on, but my husband suddenly opened up to me. Like he's just being, he calls me from work and I'm like, and he didn't call you from work before. He was, she's like, no, they didn't, she, he never called me from work before. As a matter of fact, he always wanted to stay at work longer. I'm guessing just to avoid uh, a possible conflict in, inside the relationship, right? But she's like, no, he like he, he checks with me and he talks about his feelings and now he he opens up. Like I never had that before. Not even before, you know, at the beginning of the relationship where usually things are better. So this is a proven concept that I'm telling you about. And here is the thing. That some of you who will hear this information, right? It will be like, oh. <gasps> Oh my gosh, that's so awesome because I can start working right away. I don't have to wait for my husband or my partner to start working with this, um, on this with me. And I don't have to depend on him. Like I can just set my own journey. I can put as much effort as I want into, into my healing and he'll just follow. So it's so easy. Like I don't have to... I don't have to be in that state of codependency where I'm worried whether he's going to do the same as I'm doing, where he's going to join in, where we're going to be on the same page. I don't have to worry about this. This is freedom. Yay. That will be some of you. And congratulations if you're that person because you just took your power back. And there are other people, and I hear that a lot, and hey, if you're in that boat, I have deep compassion for you because I've been in that boat for a long time. I've been in that situation for a long time too, back when I was, uh, when my relationship was falling apart. And so you might be saying, why is it me that has to do all the work? Me again, seriously? I already have so much on my head. I feel like I'm holding the whole household together, that whole family together. I'm already doing laundry and cooking and I have a job and, and there might be kids, right, that you're responsible for and you, you're responsible maybe for all the appointments and you feel like a secretary sometimes and your husband is just like responsible for just forgetting them, right, <laughs> sometimes. And you might already feel that huge overwhelm and then you hear the information I just presented you today and, and you're like, okay, another thing on my plate? And I get it. Oh my gosh, I get it. And I, and I really sympathize with you. But what, what I want to tell you here is that you're not doing this work just for your family, just for your relationship. You're really doing this work for you. And once you do this work for you and you start healing and you start getting to know yourself and being the best friend of yourself, like you being your best friend and really loving every single pieces of you, even the ones that once you've perceived as negative, then you not only just take your power back, but you this is where you really take control over your life. Because if you sometimes feel like you've got no control over your life, this is why, because you're trying to control the outer circumstances that are not controllable. And a lot of times you feel like you failed because yes, you there's no you're not the ones who need the one who needs to be or should be controlling your partner, right? Or how he behaves. 
or even maybe your parents or your children. Like there's that piece of control that you feel you're losing. Well, what I'm inviting you to do is to find that control within what you actually have control over, which is your own self, the way that you react to circumstances. Once you get that under control, and what I mean under control is like really understand and really know what to do with it, then you will feel like your whole life is under control. So you're doing this piece of work that is sustainable, that will always stay with you. It will always stay with you because once you raise your consciousness, you don't just slide back. You, you, you just keep going forward and forward and really your whole life reflects that. It's not going to be just your relationships. Although you probably will admit that it would be nice to have a relationship where you don't argue constantly and you don't have to walk on eggshells with the other person and you don't have with your partner right and you can actually sit down and have a civil conversation without yelling without screaming same goes for kids hey when I was back in that deep wounding state in that state of depression yes uh, and I've tried medication for that and it might work for some it didn't work for me my system just totally rejected the medication I was in the deep state of depression where I would cry over like every little thing. And when I start crying, I was like literally sobbing on the bathroom floor. And not only that, I was just constantly in the state of like being explosive over little, little triggers. And a lot of times my children suffered because of that. Because I would storm into their room and be like, oh, this is not clean. Look at this mess. And be like, if this is not clean in half an hour, I'm just going to toss things away. And I would come with a big garbage bag and start throwing my children's things away because their room wasn't cleaned. Yes, this is the kind of monster that was sitting inside of me. And when I, when I say monster, it was that unhealed part of me that was just screaming for attention. And I thought the problem was the mess. I thought the problem was the kids who wouldn't listen sometimes. I thought the problem was my husband who didn't appreciate me and who didn't chip in. But really it wasn't, right? So once I took the ownership of all that and shift the responsibility and the accountability on my own healing, then the whole relationship just followed. It just followed and it wasn't just the relationship that I, again, that I have with my husband, but with my children, with my parents, with my sister. I just understand a lot more about the dynamics of relationships now and I can look at it and always point the triggers back back at me and kind of dig in and, um, and see where they're coming from and not blaming the other person or relying on the other person to change so that I can be happier. Because again, that's not sustainable and that does not work. So um, I, I hope I was able to clarify a little bit for you um, why you don't have to wait for the other person to, uh, to change. Or maybe you're even thinking that the only way that you can be happy is when the other person changes. Again not sustainable, it's controlling the circumstances that are outside of you, it is putting yourself in the state of codependency. So, you know, a lot of us, probably all of us, value freedom, right? So if you really, really want your freedom, well, take your power back and free your partner out of, uh, of expectations and come to the place where you can take responsibility for your own healing and you can shift your perspective on things. You can raise your vibration, your consciousness, right? You, you, can, you can just get rid of whatever is not yours because there is a lot of kind of emotional baggage that we bring from either our childhood or just the programming, right? Getting rid of that and really looking and getting to know yourself will change your whole life. Even your... Um, your professional life, right? Maybe you're lacking um, confidence to open that business that you already wanted. Maybe you're waiting for your relationship to be better. So yeah, actually have space in your mind. You can open up space in your mind to have the capacity to even be creative and come up with like a business plan and give your business attention. Maybe that's why your business, if you have one, is failing right now, right? Because you don't have the mental capacity to actually give it 
the energy that it deserves and it needs to grow. Or maybe you just lack the confidence to even make this step and go apply for a job that you've always wanted because you feel like you're not good enough for it, right? Again, that's a that's a red flag that you need to do some inner healing. And so why am I mentioning your professional life here? Because it will also change once you start healing your relationship. You heal your relationship uh, by healing yourself, by gaining more confidence. And maybe you will be... And I'll tell you, a lot of women that I work with, yes, they have done it. They're like, okay, I was, I'm was, i changing jobs. I now have confidence to go apply for a job that I know I really want, that I will feel, feel fulfilled in, that, that is kind of calling my name. Some of them will be like, no, I asked for a raise and I got it. I'm like, woohoo, yes, cool, awesome. So I'm just trying to show you that healing when you have that objection going on, why do I have to do everything for everybody else? Well, no, you're really doing it this for your own good so that everything else can be easier. And so that those other pieces can, can just kind of fall in place on their own. And you're going to free up your energetic system so that you can focus on the things that you really, really love and enjoy. And you'll feel like your life will be more flowing instead of being burdening even your relationship you will feel like free in your relationship and you 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 want to get rid of that i always used to feel um that in my stomach that kind of feeling of okay what's going to happen am i going to get into a fight should i say it should i t- bite my tongue it was like that walking on eggshells kind of relationship i never knew where, where i was going to explode with my emotions right super unpredictable So again, what I'm inviting you to do by busting those relationship myths is to stop waiting for that knight in shiny armor that will come and save you because, hey, tough love, nobody's coming to save you if you don't do it for yourself. Nobody is. What I can offer you is absolutely my guidance, my expertise, all the tools that I've collected over the decade that work, that work in a very fast amount of time that are kind of um, elementary but also fundamental for your growth. I share all that. I tell you what to do. And you might be even that person, just as a last note, uh, because I think I uh, went on a tangent here. (laughs) I don't know. I'm just just very passionate about what I do. Um, But just as a very last note, you might be already a person who is looking at all those videos on, on YouTube and searching and reading books, but in the end, the day comes and you're within your relationship, in your relationship, and you still get into those cycles of arguments. So you have all that knowledge, but you don't even know how to put it in action, right? Into like physical actionable steps that you can do every day so that you, um, so that you heal. And so that you actually can see results because knowledge on its own is really useless unless we put it into action. So that's where I come in. That's where my guidance uh, and my coaching comes in. I like to be very practical. um, Every piece of knowledge that I have, I like to put into practical steps. This is exactly what I do on the inside of my programs um, and inside my coaching, uh, which I am inviting you absolutely there will be uh, my healing relationship blueprint blueprint program opening very soon doors will be opening soon so um, I invite you to it and please do let me know if what I said resonates with you or if you're still in that place of no I will wait for my partner to either change or to chip in because I still believe that it takes two to heal a relationship I would absolutely love to know your thoughts And thank you for listening. Until next time.